Now the latest in China trade negotiations, Mark Short, Chief of Staff to Vice President Mike Pence. Good afternoon to you, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on today. Uh, what's your take on this? Uh, does phase one have to be signed before there can be any further reduction, rollback, whatever the word is, on tariffs? I don't know that it's a have to be, Wolf. I think the president's been clear that he's, uh, he's not advocating yet uh, rolling back tariffs. But uh, I think it's important to note that uh, he did agree to delay the current or the announced increase in tariffs as these round one negotiations go on. And the feedback that we get from Secretary Mnuchin and Ambassador Lighthizer is productive negotiations. And so I would, we're very optimistic that uh, round one will be completed and uh, hopefully signed before the end of this year. In terms of that timeline, Mark, I mean, you've got another tranche of tariffs that's expected to go into place on December 15th. Is that, is that the timeline we're working with right now? Morgan, I think that there is likely within that timeline. I don't want to try to tie Mnuchin and Lighthizer's hands to a, to a specific deadline because I don't think there is one. Uh, but uh, the, the September 15th, October 15th round that was delayed has uh, continued to be in abeyance. And uh, I would expect that as we approach December 15th, hopefully before then, everything is locked up. Uh, Mark, is it fair to say that uh, your boss, the vice president, has a tougher view, a tougher stance on China perhaps than the president does today? Maybe they were seeing eye to eye originally, but with the president slightly softening his position, is the vice president's view tougher now? Uh, no, Wolf. I think that they're pretty much in lockstep. I think that it's, it's hard to find an administration that has uh, reset the relationship uh, better than this administration has. I think for the last few decades, ever since China was allowed in the World Trade Organization, there was a hope and a belief that uh, other freedoms would follow. And, and we haven't seen that in China. We haven't seen uh, a discontinuation of the human rights abuses, the persecution of religious freedom. Uh, we've, we've continued to see intellectual property theft. We've continued to see them operating in, in the way that the Communist Party of China always operated. But if you actually look at the vice president's remarks, he went through this very carefully with the president. We highlighted all those abuses, but the vice president very clearly said, for those of you who think we're trying to decouple from China, absolutely not. We're looking to negotiate with China. We're looking to work with China. But it means we also have a realistic view of what the future holds. And it's not a naive notion that if you just allow more trade and you allow them in the World Trade Organization, that all of a sudden China will change. We haven't seen that in 25 years. And instead, they've become a greater national security threat to the United States. And this administration has very clear-eyed views on that. Uh, I guess then um, I, my question mark is whether this is a strategic decision by the vice president and the president to pay, play kind of good cop, bad cop, because that speech you mentioned on uh, October 24 uh, by the vice president was very, very tough on, on China. It, it led to a, a very fierce response from a foreign uh, ministry uh, spokesperson for the Chinese saying it exuded sheer arrogance and hypocrisy and was packed with political prejudice and lies. China expresses its strong indignation and adamant disapproval to that speech. I guess one wouldn't expect uh, to elicit that response from a Chinese official at the same time that you're trying to uh, get the, the ink dry on phase one of a, of a trade deal. Well, I, uh, we're pleased that uh, the folks in China were able to, uh, to read and listen to the vice president's speech. I think that uh, the vice president gave a speech a year ago at the Hudson Institute in which he gave similar remarks. And, and we just hope the people of China get to read the speech because there they don't enjoy the same freedoms of speech. And, uh, and I think that uh, the vice president is very uh, encouraging that we want to have a relationship with the people of China. Unfortunately, it's their government that's had such a repressive regime. And I, and I think that's been the position of, of this entire administration. It doesn't mean, as I said, that we can't strike trade deals. And I think that the president has been very clear about looking at factories across the country that have been shut down because of unfair trade deals and wanting to, to basically uh, start a new chapter in what our trade negotiations are. And I think he's been a successful at, uh, at basically starting over again. And we look forward to a more productive relationship moving forward. This, as you said, would be phase one. The more, I think, uh, structural reforms will be in the future. Mark, I want to shift gears a little bit um, because a, a, co a country like China, certainly there's this expectation now based on history that there's going to be things like censorship, espionage, et cetera. Uh, but given the news we got this week about former Twitter employees charged with spying for Saudi Arabia and digging into the accounts of kingdom critics, I mean, Saudi Arabia is such a key ally in the Middle East for the U.S. How do you think the U.S. and, and American companies should be responding to a situation like this? 
Well, I think that, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of countries don't enjoy the same freedoms that we do in the United States. And we hope that uh, American companies are exporting the same ideals that we hold uh, so dear here in America. And, and whether that's uh, Saudi Arabia or China or others, you're right that Saudi Arabia is a strategic partner in the Middle East and has been an ally against, uh, against countries that I think pose a serious threat to the United States, like Iran. But it doesn't mean that, that we turn a blind eye to, uh, to human rights abuses. All right, Mark Short, thanks for joining us today.